Um, so in this question, we are given a negative charge, which is making a semicircle. Um, the total amount of charge is Q. And we also know that the charge is distributed non-uniformly. In fact, we know the dependence of the linear charge density as a function of the angle theta with respect to the y-axis. And then we place a positive charge Q0 at the origin. Uh, the question is, what is the Coulomb force experienced by that charge Q0? So, uh, well, first we can find the electric field created at the origin by this uh, semicircular charge. So to do that, uh, let's look at the small elements of charge of length dl. Uh, <coughs> this element of charge creates an electric field pointing towards it because it's a negative charge and we can say that this is dE. Um, because of the symmetry of the problem, you can see that the uh, resultant electric field will only have Y component. It will not have an X component. Uh, a symmetric element to this one on this side will cancel the X component of this element. So we need to worry only about the Y component here. So let's figure out what this Y component is. So DE with the subscript Y, uh, which is pointing this way. So this is DEY is equal to dE times cosine theta. If you just look at this uh, directions, then you can see that dEy is equal to dE times uh, cosine theta. Uh, what about dE itself? Well, dE is equal to K times the amount of charge within this element. Let's say it's dQ dq over this distance squared, so r squared, times cosine of theta. So now let's express uh, dq in terms of lambda. Now we know that uh, dq is equal to lambda dl, where dl is the length of that element, of that arc. Um, on the other hand, we also know that dl is equal to r d theta. So we can say lambda r d theta. So this is dl. Um, the d theta angle here is, is this small angle within which, within, within which we have this element dl. So this is our d theta. So you can then substitute for lambda so this becomes lambda 0 r cosine theta d theta. And now we can get the final expression for dEy. So dEy therefore is equal to uh, k lambda 0 r cosine square theta d theta over r squared. Well, r, r and the square will cancel out, and so then you can calculate for EY. EY is equal to k lambda 0 integral of cosine squared theta d theta. And if you look at this, remember theta is measured from the y-axis, so theta here is changing from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. So from minus, minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So these are the limits. Um, again, this is the kind of integral that uh, we are not generally expecting you to be able to solve. Uh, so you can, you can work it out yourself uh, just by looking at uh, from the table, but I'll just give you the final answer here. So the final answer you get is uh, pi over 2 k uh, lambda 0 over r. So we can say that uh, the final expression for the force 
because we need to find the force is equal to the electric field times that uh, charge Q0 so that would be equal to pi over 2 K lambda 0 over R times Q0 and the unit vector J because it's pointing in the positive Y direction so this is the force experienced by the uh, charge Q0 now uh, there's one more thing which you can do this is not asked in the problem but uh, you can express lambda 0 in terms of uh, big Q what you can do is this uh, you know that the total charge Q is equal to integral of lambda dl and then you convert lambda dl into lambda r d theta and you integrate from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 and you get an expression in terms of lambda 0 and then you express lambda 0 in terms of q and substitute it here uh, but this is something you can do yourself